what's the worst that could happen? Someone tells you you're not an independent woman? Okay, I'm not an independent woman and that's okay. I'm still a valuable woman. You can be a valuable woman and not be independent. Honestly, if it's your choice, if that's where you wanna be, respect should be given to you. That's how I feel about homemaking, you know? What's the worst someone could say to me? You know, you stay at home. Yeah, I do and I love it. What's the problem? Okay, so I really encourage you to kind of take a little bit of that confidence and... everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I run the blog called Mrs. Midwest. So the topic of today's video is all about homemaking and one of my favorite things to do while I do my homemaking, my cooking, my sewing, my cleaning is listen to an audiobook. And keeping with this theme, I'm excited to tell you all that the sponsor for today's video is Audible. With the holiday season still in full swing, it's not too late to celebrate the year and gift someone you love or yourself <laughs> with an Audible membership. Audible gives you access to an unmatched selection of audiobooks, 30% off regularly priced audiobooks, one free audiobook a month, and exclusive sales. There are so many deals, I can barely fit them all in one sentence. Along with this amazing unmatched selection of audiobooks, they also have a line of exclusive Audible originals, which I'm actually taking advantage of right now. I'm listening to Pride and Prejudice, read by Rosamund Pike, and ladies, it is amazing. I'm loving it so much. And I'm excited to tell you all that right now, for a limited time only, you can get one free audiobook and two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. I love listening to Audible, especially when I'm doing my homemaking. I think it just makes my day so much brighter. So visit audible.com slash Mrs. Midwest or text Mrs. Midwest to 500, 500 to take advantage of this deal. That's audible.com slash Mrs. Midwest or text Mrs. Midwest to 500 500 today. So that concludes the sponsorship portion of this video. Thank you so much Audible and let's dive into today's topic which is all about homemaking. You guys know I talk about tradition, femininity, homemaking constantly on my channel. It is the theme of my channel and I thought it would be so lovely to finish out 2019 with one more video about homemaking. I might have mentioned this before on my channel but I kind of steer clear from the word housewife because to me it really connotes images of the real housewives of fill-in-the-blank city. You know, women who are screaming at each other, divorce, lots of drama, you know, reality TV. It doesn't show anyone's best side. It's heavily edited, but that heavily edited dramatic version of a housewife has really been propagated in our modern media. And if it's not that version, there's a lot of disdain for homemakers, housewives, images of very lonely women, people propped up on Xanax in the afternoon, women who are super lonely pyramid schemes the whole nine yards so there's a lot of thought and conversation towards homemakers and housewives in a negative sense so how can we step away from those crazy stereotypes and how can we move into a really honorable life path and purpose with homemaking well I've come up with five steps starting with number one which is of course establishing your purpose what is your reason for homemaking I think it's really important to have a purpose and a motivation every time Time you wake up in the morning or whether you are in a career whether you're at home whether you're physically unable to do either of those things you know I think we can all have purpose in life not everyone has to have this purpose but my purpose for homemaking is to really fulfill a role at home to support my husband to have more time and energy in my life to support my community and to ultimately fulfill the role that Paul speaks about in Titus 2 you know to be a keeper of my home that's my purpose and so now today I want to ask you what's your purpose for homemaking is your purpose to be more peaceful to be more organized you know to have more time with your family to take care of your kids at home what's your purpose something that motivates you every day because if you don't have that you might feel kind of listless and purposeless in your homemaking you might kind of feel like you have no direction you're steering you know you wake up you don't really know what to do you don't have a routine you know I fell into that especially when I first started homemaking okay so find your purpose it could be in the realm of having more peace 
having a stronger marriage, having a stronger family, being there for your children, being there for your community, or simply because you want to live out your faith more or whatever, okay? So find your purpose, write it down, reflect upon it, pray upon it for my Christians, and in general, let that be your foundation for why you're doing what you're doing, you know? any career you're in, anybody, you know, in the audience, you have a career, do this for your career, but really everybody needs to find their purpose. You need to have a motivating factor for why you're doing what you're doing. So that brings us to number two, which is recognizing the non-monetary value of homemaking and building confidence on that. You need to break out of that mindset, especially the mindset we have in our capitalist Western society, where the most important value a person can bring is monetary. You know, what money do they bring you? This is often a reason to stated in why people don't want to have children, you know, they're expensive. They take away from your money. They don't really bring anything to the table. And you could say that about a homemaker, a housewife, you know, she doesn't bring anything in the sense of monetary value. She only takes away. I believe that that's a very narrow-minded and messed up way to view people and their relationship in your life. But I believe that many things in life have value just for existing, you know, regardless of whether or not they bring bring in a paycheck and I also want to say homemaking does bring in value if you can't sleep at night thinking about the monetary value of what you're doing there is a monetary value to homemaking all of the cooking all of the cleaning all of the child care if you have children all of the volunteering you do blessing your husband blessing your neighbors saving money budgeting organizing you know that does have a monetary value it's easy to say oh but when I worked full-time I did all of that cleaning and cooking you're talking about and I brought in a paycheck but the thing I want to kind of challenge you to remember is that when you're doing those two roles all that labor at home all that labor in the workforce that's very stressful okay so part of the value of being a homemaker isn't monetary the value comes in the extra time you have in the more peaceful life you might have in the less stress you're dealing with in the less you know confusing dynamics or pressures I encourage you to recognize that not all things that are valuable are monetary time is valuable valuable peace is valuable creative space is valuable organization is valuable relationships are valuable and a lot of these things can be enhanced by a homemaker's lifestyle simply because you're not spending that 40 hours in an office you know you're spending it at home you have much more time to devote to the success of your household this brings us to number three which is find balance for you but I know a lot of homemakers before you have kids a little bit more of your time with modern technology we have dishwashers we have washing machines we have vacuum cleaners you know we're not spending all day cleaning the way they did a hundred years ago and because we have that freed up time if you want to do a part-time job if you want to volunteer a little bit maybe you want to do some babysitting or you want to you know take up blogging like I did you know it's okay to fill that time you need to find your balance some people are super energetic busy hard-working people that just love the chase of you know working on projects, etc. Maybe you're going to want more to do other than just traditional homemaking. But if you are just traditionally homemaking, that's amazing. You know, don't pressure yourself to have to get a part-time job just out of stress of trying to tell people you have a title, okay? I know a lot of people like to have a title and, and a lot of women aren't comfortable with the title of homemaker. But it's my goal through this channel, through this movement we're doing online to change that narrative. I really encourage you to differentiate when you want that part-time job when you want that side gig when you want that little creative hobby because you're just that energetic person versus because you're afraid of what people will think of you okay so find a balance that works for you and that will really help you get the most out of homemaking all right this brings us to number four which is simply be productive okay so I get my little like game face on sometimes on this channel and I talk straight to you and I just want to tell you if you're going to be a homemaker you need to be productive barring mental physical diseases disabilities things that really hold you back you know if you're a healthy person mentally physically etc you need to be productive when you're at home okay you're not bringing in that paycheck like I talked about but there is value we can bring and you need to bring that value okay you need to be productive if you want to get the most out of homemaking if you want to feel the most accomplished if you want to feel great about what you're doing bring value be productive being that productive homemaker is a woman that has built up her skills she's built up her home as a homemaker you are not just 
a cleaning lady for your home. You're not just a maid. You're not just, you know, a cook shoved away in the kitchen. You are the keeper of your home. You are cleaning your kingdom. You are cleaning and cooking for your kingdom. That's how I view it. This is my little kingdom. <laughs> my little ranch house is my kingdom. And that's how I view it because we can't just sit at home and be lazy. And there is a very real trap of laziness when you're at home, when no one's looking at you, when no one's viewing what you're doing. And when you have a really sweet husband, you know, you know, it might be easy to be lazy, to just chill. And I really encourage you, if you want to feel great about homemaking, be productive. Okay, you don't need to push yourself 110 miles an hour, but you do need to kind of start incorporating um, productivity and accomplishments into your everyday life, whether that is making a breakfast, making dinner, learning how to bake bread, learning how to cook various meals, or learning how to properly iron something, learning how to clean things, or learning how to create a system in your home for organization, you know, keeping track of the budget, etc. Be productive. You will feel better. I promise you. I had a little lazy spurt in the beginning of being a homemaker when I didn't know my purpose, when I felt kind of sad that I didn't have a title, you know, in a career. I was kind of lazy, but it made me feel gross inside. It made me feel very sick and yucky at the end of the day to not really have anything to show for it. Um, so I really encourage you, even if, you know, you don't have a boss standing over your shoulder, um, to hold yourself accountable. And if you need help with that, go online. One of the best things I've ever figured out is that if you want to clean a room, take a before shot, put it on your Instagram story, and right before, tap to tidy so that your Instagram followers are going to want to tap to the next slide and see that clean room. I do that when I need extra motivation and accountability because I'm not perfect. You know, there's all there's always going to be times when we need to be lazy, when we need to rest. I take a weekly Sabbath because ultimately being productive brings value to your family, okay? You can do this in so many different ways and the best thing is you can incorporate your personality and your talents into the ways you choose to be productive. I love sewing. I've always loved fashion and I made this sweater and it has a little neck tie on the back and I spend an afternoon making the sweater instead of buying a sweater and I hem my husband's pants and I fix my tights up when they get holes in the toes and I sew curtains you know I've chosen sewing because I love fashion I love design and I love sewing not every woman not every homemaker is gonna love sewing okay so kind of major in your favorite subjects homemaking subjects you know mine are baking cooking and sewing and then minor in the other ones you know my minors would be budgeting and organization because that's not my favorite thing okay so major and minor in different elements of homemaking find the ones that make you really excited really pumped and create a game plan for how you can bring value not only to yourself but also to your family through those skills all right my friends this brings us to our fifth and final point of how to get the most out of homemaking and that is by standing firm as a homemaker the reason this one is so important is because standing firm is what changed things for me as a homemaker I felt more confident other people respected it other people began to understand what I was doing I took it to the online world I met all of you you know it changed everything and I've noticed especially in the comment sections and the emails you send me and the wonderful comments you leave me that confidence as a homemaker has really changed a lot of your lives as well when you take on that mantle you know not in a haughty way you know not looking down your nose but in a way where you embrace your role when you embrace the fact that you have a purpose when you get really excited about it you know when you gain your skills when you learn to bake better when you do your decorating whatever that confidence is very enticing to other people. It's very attractive and it's exciting. And I really feel like we're building this movement online right now. There are so many Instagram accounts, YouTube channels popping up every day of women talking about femininity, homemaking. Really wanna encourage you, if you wanna have a part in this, um, be confident yourself. And if you're a career woman and you do a little bit of homemaking on the side, you know, embrace that and show respect to people who do it full time, just as we respect full-time career woman okay so this is a mutual exchange you're going to have to start with yourself if you're too embarrassed to tell people I'm a homemaker if you're too ashamed of yourself you're never going to really love it okay so you kind of need to throw off that mentality you know, we think of the cool boss babe she's so hardcore but you know what what about a cool housewife 
<laughs> it might not roll off the tongue, but there is a level of being a homemaker and being a housewife that is really cool. It's special. It's um, unique. It's not common. <laughs> a huge part of becoming more confident as a homemaker is rejecting the modern narrative of things, okay? So if you're still living in that modern narrative, if you're holding yourself to that modern standard, you are going to fall short. And if someone would say to me, you know, you're not an independent woman, I would say, you're right. <laughs> I depend on my husband. He feeds me. He clothes me. And he depends on me for a lot of things. And we work together because that's what marriage is. What's the worst that could happen? Someone tells you you're not an independent woman? Okay, I'm not an independent woman. And that's okay. I'm still a valuable woman. You can be a valuable woman and not be independent. And that's okay. Honestly, if it's your choice, if that's where you want to be, respect should be given to you and that's how i feel about homemaking you know what's the worst someone could say to me you know you stay at home yeah i do and i love it what's the problem okay so i really encourage you to kind of take a little bit of that confidence and if you need to stand up for yourself but mostly you know stand up for yourself to yourself don't put yourself down don't view yourself as some sort of negative leech um but also be productive bring value to your home you know if you're feeling a little bit lazy kick it in the butt. Stop being lazy. If you needed someone to tell you that today, I will tell you that today. But in general, just remember overall to get the most out of homemaking, you need a purpose. You're going to want to forget the modern narrative. You're going to want to remember that money, the monetary value of things, that's not all that's valuable in this world. And ultimately, you're going to want to stand firm in the confidence that you are a homemaker and that's a great thing. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to share this video with another homemaker who might be struggling in the confidence area, do it. Let's continue to build this movement. It's amazing. I'm loving it. I'm loving meeting all of you. I want to say thank you. Um, we've hit 125K subscribers. Crazy town crazy town what a beautiful way to finish out 2019 i want to thank you all for such an amazing 2019 i feel like we've made huge headway in our culture um, standing up for traditional living femininity homemaking and we can only um, continue to do that in 2020 really grow into who we are as feminine women homemakers traditional or people who support those kind of women I want to say thank you to you all. It's been such a good year. Um, I just love you all. I'm praying for you all. You know, until the end of my life, I'm always going to look back at 2019 as a very special year in my life, and that's because of all of you. So thank you again for watching. If you want more of this kind of content, I have a lot of um, content about homemaking on my blog, videos about it as well on this channel. Just root through. You will find them. And in general, I just hope you have a wonderfully blessed and confident 2020, my beautiful sisters.